series is titled The Balcony, The Print Portfolio, and I began creating the prints in 2019. And the inspiration for the work, uh, the title, and the imagery in the portfolio uh, stems from reading the play The Balcony by Jean Godard. And in this play, the narrative uh, unfolds in a brothel. Uh, so there's all this debauchery, there's, there's uh, these strange characters uh, and dialogue that happens uh, within this space. And then outside the space, outside the brothel, is complete chaos. This social, uh, civil unrest is, is described outside of the walls of the brothel. And so the narrative becomes really interesting to me, the, the play, because I begin to think about, one, what's happening in the States at this time, post the election, and the presidency, and that administration, and, and this how for eight years there seemed to be all this progression in the country. And then there's this new president, he comes in, and all of these things begin to like, deteriorate. The sense of optimism and hope, at least for many, um, diminishes uh, significantly uh, in a matter of you know, days. And so there's this feeling of complete like, chaos and disruption. And all that's happening like, outside of our apartments, or outside of our homes, uh, or outside of the interior space. But then within the interior space, our lives still kind of move or are directed in ways that are familiar and uh, repetitive. So that was kind of like the first kind of enlightenment that I, I had for myself while reading the play. And then beyond that, I began to think, well, yeah, there's, there's, there's like all this, this, this tragedy and disappointment that's happening uh, politically, uh, socially. But our lives still go on. We still want to enjoy like lovemaking. We still want to drink. We still want to, uh, you know, we're still getting up and going to work. And while we're, our personal lives and, and our obsessions and our indulgences are still being, um, are still being enjoyed, we still have, we, we're continuing to have to deal with these more complicated and, and uh, challenging um, obstacles that the world, the larger world, uh, is presenting to ourselves. So when do we become participants in that world? When do we become advocates or gladiators fighting against these, these, this contention? And then when do we say, oh, fuck all that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in my home. I'm going to stay in this brothel and engage in my indulgences. So that conflict really became interesting, interesting to me. Like, when does the individual become a, a, a soldier or a uh, world citizen and, and try to create change or bring about change or be involved? And when, are they, and when do we say, mm, uh, I just want to focus on my, uh, my, my, my concentrated myopic life? All of my practice, photography and drawing are at the center of it. And so I, I don't do any preliminary drawings or sketches. So all of my sketches and quotes come from photographic imagery. Uh, so from what I view on the internet to magazines to newspapers, I'm looking at images all the time and just kind of absorbing, absorbing, absorbing those pictures uh, and, and then allowing those pictures to, to serve as the sketches or the, the blueprints for for the drawings or these etches. So, so even the etches here, even the works here, they all, they all, everything has, has begun from or is referencing a, a photographic image pulled from the internet and again from, from newspapers. And I think that one thing about the photograph is that and images from media is we're, we're constantly being presented with that. When either we're looking at our phone or Instagram or an advertisement on the street, we're, we're always in relationship to, to, that, to that presentation. And most of the times, I don't think we understand how it affects us, how we absorb and retain or understand what we are looking at. But in, when I'm in the studio and when I'm working, I become extremely conscious about that imagery and, and how images of war or images of, of um, beauty, how that can not only 
change or affect <laughs> my 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 mood, but also how it can can inform someone as it relates to what they want to uh, what they want to aspire to or for, or how they want to retreat or engage with the world. I was born and raised in Tennessee. My parents very early on saw my interest in drawing and painting and being, uh, we wouldn't use the word artist at that point, but just being creative. Because they saw the interest early on, they wanted to, to nourish my desire to be creative. And so they put me into art classes and private art classes at the age of eight or nine. And so with some of my earliest memories is staying after school to take painting classes in the library of my elementary, and my sister picking me up from, from, from school. So those are some of my earliest, uh, earliest childhood memories. Uh, so, I, so I always say I blame my parents for me now being an artist. They uh, were definitely encouraging and extremely supportive in me wanting to understand my talents and wanting to nourish and mature those talents and those interests. And then later on, going to both the university and then grad school to study and further my education in the arts. Growing up in the South, um, understanding the history, the complicated history between racial dynamics, how those dynamics affect both communities and then also the individual. Uh, I understood that as a young man growing up uh, in Tennessee. Uh, I understood what having black skin could mean, meant, how it could be both celebrated and then uh, demonized or cause someone to believe it to be a threat. Uh, completely understood like the the dynamics and within the black uh, community as it relates to uh, shades, like the shades of brown. So me being like light skin, uh, and there's perhaps someone would think I'm on this greater hierarchy of of the the, the brown spectrum from being like extremely light to, to those of darker skin. So I understood all of, all of that growing up. It was definitely as an adult when, when I had a, a, a far more dense, more, a greater understanding of the, the, um, the totality of, of understanding one's like, place and how, uh, how place can inform who they are and how they, how they navigate and move through the world. Drawing and art is definitely, for me now, a weapon to use to make people aware of the complications of the world, but also to make people aware of the joys, of the beauty of the world and of themselves. When I was young, obviously, I didn't have that understanding then as to the power of art and the power of drawing and what art could produce and how it could bring about change, uh, change both large and then also a shift in someone's mood or understanding of themselves. Uh, had no idea of that kind of power that, that art could bring or have. That obviously came later. I would say that that truly came after grad school, after all of my studies. How does one leave the balcony and enter into the world? There's a staircase. And it's not, it's, not, it's not a very tall or, or, or steep staircase that leads from, from the chairs in which one sits in, uh, in the balcony to, to the stage, to the, to, to the world. I don't think it takes much for, uh, for one to engage in the world. It just depends on what level of engagement you're interested in, in having, whether that is making an online donation to some LGBTQ um, foundation, or whether it is actually going out into the street with signs and placards and shouting and demonstrating and um, 
using one's physical self to show protest. I believe it's definitely one's individual level of comfortability and how they feel like they best can bring about change.